the CBS Broadcast Center in Los Angeles. This is CBS 2 News at 5 p.m. A woman is in critical condition after a swarm of Africanized bees attacked her and the first responders who came to help. Six people were sent to the hospital after this morning's frightening and sudden attack. It happened in front of a house in the 23,000 block of Buckland Lane. And that's where CBS 2's Dave Lopez is live with details on this attack. Dave? Well, Susanna, the uh, six people that were hospitalized, two remain hospitalized. The woman, identified as a 32, uh, excuse me, a 52-year-old housekeeper, uh, is in critical condition. Uh, and just exactly why these Africanized bees uh, attacked her uh, is a big mystery. It happened right where that towel is, and just on the other side of that bush is where the Africanized bees were. As many as 80,000, I am told, and they just swarmed all over her. It was just, it was so horrendous. It was awful. And I felt so powerless, there was nothing I could do. But all Cynthia Emmett's could do as she was walking her dog was watch in horror as bees completely encircled a woman later identified as Maria, a cleaning woman. It was like this. It was huge. She described it like a cloud smothering this woman's face. According to witnesses, Maria was in the house with the other three cleaning ladies, and she decided to come back out and get this mop right here. She opened up the trunk, and as she was looking in, she turned, and that's when the bees hit her. There were so many bees, I am told, that when firefighters arrived, they couldn't even see her face. She had probably a few hundred, if not a thousand bees just embedded into her hair and crawling all over her face. It just felt like somebody was shooting us with the uh, airsoft BBs. He was spraying this and they were freezing the bees as they were kind of hovering and, and landing on us. But the fire extinguisher worked for only a few seconds. The bees were relentless. The firefighters had no time to put on protective gear and all four who answered the call were stung. I got stung a couple times in the face. Finally, Maria was dragged away from the scene. She could barely walk. About a block and a half away, the ambulance showed up. The bees by now had dissipated, and she was taken in critical condition to Saddleback Hospital. So I opened up the lid, and there was approximately 10 to 15 gallons worth of honeycomb in there. Matt Kielsmeyer calls himself a bee expert. He took this picture of the hive that he found inside the gas meter that was located just a few feet from where Maria had parked her car. He said there could have been up to 80,000 Africanized bees inside that meter. I was telling her, move from the bees. Sarah, the homeowner, described that she heard Maria screaming, went outside, got stung herself on her arms, and put the garden hose on Maria, hoping to chase the bees away. It didn't work. Hours later, Sarah, the homeowner, complained she was having breathing issues. Okay, Paramedics Sarah? were called, and she was taken to the hospital. And we are told she remains hospital. As for Maria again, critical condition, bitten, stung more than 200 times bee stings. I talked to a veterinarian who said that Africanized bees normally don't attack like this, but all it takes are one or two in a big group and they feel threatened. They then let off some type of odor that is a warning to the rest of the pack, if you will, and then everybody joins in. That's what happened here. Reporting live from Lake Forest, I'm Dave Lopez, CBS 2 News. Thank you, Dave. We have some breaking news, a robbery at an Apple store in Valencia. And Stu Mandel is live in Sky 2 over the scene with the very latest. Stu? Pat, Suzanne, must have been scary moments out here at the Valencia Mall at the Apple store for employees and customers when four suspects ran inside the store and started stealing an unknown amount of Apple products from the store. Happened in broad daylight just about an hour ago. Now the store is still open. You can see that right there. Four suspects in total, and we understand that there was cell phone video or at least pictures of the suspects while they were in the store or running from the store. We also know that those four suspects got into a white Nissan Altima that fled the scene. The sheriff's department has been out here. They did investigate. No weapons were seen. And of course, we are, as we know, nobody was injured. Live in Sky 2 over Valencia. I'm Stu Mandel. Back to you ladies in the studio. Thank you, Stu. Developing news from Hawaii. At least 23 people were injured after lava hit a tour boat near the Kilauea volcano. Well, the captain said the tour boat was about 500 yards Offshore, a witness said lava punctured the roof of the boat, leaving a basketball site and injuring many passengers. The plume actually exploded about 300 yards in the air. Uh, particles of the lava actually landed on the vessel, damaged most parts of the vessel. Really a big chunk fell through the roof and partly on passengers. 
Now, many of the injuries are considered minor. Only one was considered serious. That passenger suffered a broken leg. They said they think it's Russia. Uh, I have uh, President Putin. Uh, he just said it's not Russia. I will say this. I don't see any reason why it would be. But I really see well, in an extraordinary moment on the world stage, President Trump fails to hold Russia accountable for interfering in the 2016 election. Reaction is pouring in after President Trump's meeting and press conference with Russian President Vladimir Putin in Helsinki. The two leaders talked for nearly two hours alone, except for there are translators in the room. CBS2 political reporter Dave Bryan is here with information on the news conference and reaction to it, Dave. President under fire from almost every direction tonight, including several intelligence officials who are fighting back. The director of national intelligence even went so far as to contradict his boss, the president today. Not only did Dan Coates stress Russia interfered in the election, he says it's leading pervasive efforts to undermine our democracy. This comes days after 12 Russians were indicted in the Russia probe. It's a stunning turn of events as the president refused to believe U.S. intelligence over the Russian leader. With the eyes of the world on Helsinki, President Trump accepted the word of Vladimir Putin over considerable evidence from the U.S. intelligence community and Justice Department that Russia attacked American democracy. So I have great confidence in my intelligence people, but... Uh, I will tell you that President Putin was extremely strong and powerful in his denial today. Instead, the president, who still sees the Russia investigation as revenge for him winning the 2016 election, attacked Hillary Clinton and the Democrats, declaring their weak security was the problem not Russian hacking. It was an extraordinary moment in American history, the president's repeated denial of election interference and the fact that he did so at Putin's side. It was a clean campaign. I beat Hillary Clinton easily, and it's a shame that there can even be a little bit of a cloud over it. And he blasted the special counsel's investigation into election meddling. I think that the, the probe is a disaster for our country. I think it's kept us apart. It's kept us separated. There was no collusion at all. Uh, everybody knows it. Putin echoed those words. We should be guided by facts. Can you name a single fact that would definitively prove the collusion? This is utter nonsense. By day's end, Putin answered another lingering question. President Putin, did you want President Trump to win the election, and did you direct any of your officials to help him do that? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Democrats blasted the president. Millions of Americans will continue to wonder if the only possible explanation for this dangerous behavior is the possibility that President Putin holds damaging information over President Trump. Former CIA director John Brennan slammed the president. He tweeted, Donald Trump's press conference performance in Helsinki rises to and exceeds the threshold of high crimes and misdemeanors. It was nothing short of treasonous. He added that Trump, quote, is wholly in the pocket of Putin. But it wasn't just Democrats and intelligence officials. Some Republicans and even some officials from within the Trump government, as we mentioned, reportedly expressed disbelief about the president's Helsinki shocker. But Russia had another view. Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov calling the summit magnificent and better than super. That's not a surprise, right? That's about the right. only thing about this that isn't a surprise. Huh? Yeah, and we haven't heard the last of this, no, that's for no, sure. No, no, no. This is just the beginning, I think. All right. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Dave. Okay. Lawmakers on both sides of the aisle were critical of the president's defense of Vladimir Putin over the U.S. intelligence conclusion of Russian meddling. Republican Senator John McCain of Arizona called it a disgraceful performance. He issued a statement saying, the damage inflicted by President Trump's naivete, egotism, false equivalence, and sympathy for autocrats is difficult to calculate. But it is clear that the summit in Helsinki was a tragic mistake. Senator Kamala Harris tweeted, Trump flattered Putin, who attacked our democracy and insulted the brave men and women of our intelligence community. It is disgraceful. Minority leader Nancy Pelosi tweeted, every single day I found myself asking, what do the Russians have on Donald Trump personally, financially, and politically? The answer to that question is the only thing that explains his behavior and his refusal to stand up to Putin. 
Arizona Republican Senator Jeff Flake said, I never thought I would see the day when our American president would stand on the stage with the Russian president and place blame on the United States for Russian aggression. This is shameful. CBS Evening News anchor Jeff Glor had a one-on-one -on -one interview with President Trump ahead of today's summit with Putin. And this is what the president had to say about a possible relationship with the Russian leader. I think we have a chance to have a very good relationship. I mean, the couple of times I've met him, uh, we got along very well. There were very short meetings, but we got along very well. And if I got along with him, that's a good thing. You know, we're a magnificent, powerful country. Uh, they're a very powerful country. We're a nuclear country. They're a nuclear country. And uh, getting along is a good thing, not a bad thing. For more on Jeff Glor's interview with the president, be sure to watch the CBS Evening News at 6.30 right here on CBS2. The other big political story today, a reprieve of sorts for reunited immigrant families. A federal judge today temporarily stopped deportations of families who were recently reunited after being separated by the Trump administration. It's in response to an ACLU filing asking that deportations be stalled at least a week after the families were reunified. This would allow time to ensure no family is improperly deported. The judge gave government lawyers a week to respond to the motion. A child is in critical condition and two people are dead after this fiery crash in Norwalk. And police say it was caused by a DUI driver. The crash happened on the 605 North near Rosecrans Avenue around 1 o'clock this morning. CHP officers say the driver of this Infinity rear-ended a minivan that was carrying five people. One man made it out of the van but died on the freeway. And that second victim was trapped inside the van. I saw the body right in the middle of the freeway. Then all the screaming, you know, with the little kid over here. I don't know if there was a mom or the relative or something, you know, but there was like a big uh, scream over here. Officers say the driver accused of causing the crash failed a field sobriety test. He was arrested for DUI, but more charges could follow. An Oregon woman is telling her incredible story of survival after she plunged off a cliff and managed to stay alive for a week. Plus, Amazon Prime Day causes the internet giant to crash as the mega sale gets underway. What the glitch could cost the company and customers. And a wildfire burns thousands of acres near Yosemite, closing roads and threatens the national park. Once again, the heat is on, everybody. We'll have a complete forecast coming up.